The alpha waves allow you to measure the number of highly active columns. There are many columns in the cerebral cortex, but only a few of them are highly active at a time. The high activity in a column starts here. The activity at the high level lasts only a short time. The red arrows mark the end of the high activity in this column. A regulating system keeps the number of highly active columns within appropriate limits. In this example, the limits are 4 and 5. The efforts of the regulating system are visible as alpha waves. The length of the alpha waves varies because the turnover of highly active columns is slightly uneven. There is a tendency for the uneven distribution to repeat itself. The result is a pattern in the wavelength variation. The interval of the pattern reveals the number of highly active columns. You can measure the duration of high activity. Colorful horizontal lines show the high activity in individual columns. The duration is four and a half waves. There are 20 waves between the arrows. The average wavelength is 104 milliseconds. Then, the duration is 4.5 times 104 milliseconds. To find the pattern, you need a long sequence of alpha waves. And the amount of noise and other disturbances must be minimal. The line indicates a sequence that is good enough for analysis. The waves are somewhat triangular, and they are asymmetric. Reversing the polarity will make the upslope less steep than the downslope. It is these peaks that are of interest. Unfortunately, the peaks are very sensitive to noise and interference. The areas under the waves are slightly less sensitive. Therefore, the middle of the area under a wave is a better choice than the peak. The wavelength is the distance between two vertical lines. The chart shows the variation in wavelength. And there is a clear tendency for a pattern in the variation. You can test the pattern to see if it is reliable. Two repeats are much better than one. Wave sequences are seldom long enough for three repeats. A sequence of alpha waves reflects the efforts of the regulating system during a thought. Most sequences are short, because most thoughts are short. A copy of the pattern has been moved five waves to the right. A correlation coefficient can be calculated. Together with the number of data pairs, it gives a probability. In this case, the probability that the pattern occurred by pure chance is small, less than 0.02. For comparison you can test an interval of four alpha waves. Then there is no positive correlation. You can also exclude an interval of six alpha waves. The lower chart uses a relative measure of wavelength. Difference in wavelength is the difference between a wavelength and the average of the wavelengths one step ahead and one step behind. The probability of a mistake becomes very low, less than 0.0002. And you can say, the pattern in this example is reasonably safe. To conclude the video, the brain organizes its activity so that some of the activity becomes mental activity. For mental activity, the columns must have high or low activity. And only a few of the columns can be highly active at a time. This is the central part of the two levels hypothesis. 
It's not easy to measure the number of highly active columns, but it is possible. And you can measure how long the high activity lasts. These measurements are possible, thanks to patterns in the wavelength variation. The existence of the patterns strongly supports the two levels hypothesis. The road is open for a unified theory of mental illness, epilepsy, temperament, and alpha waves.